Brian Horton tweeting the words "Worlds collide," hashtag Wolverine, hashtag Spider Man. What what do you make of that? I will say this: uh, while that is news to me, um, and while you know, while a, a Spider Man Wolverine crossover would be terribly exciting. <laughs> Hello. I don't know why I perfectly tried to mimic you there. You do this for a living. I I can't do it as well as you can. <laughs> I you know I, I could I it would be I would be hard pressed to, to to mimic you right now as well. So so we're 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 even. I will take that. And what a gorgeous backdrop you've got there. Thank you. It is uh it is it's, as do you. I, I I always appreciate nerdy things in the background. Um and you you have them. I'm gonna play this to my fiance over and over again because currently me and my dad are trying to sort out the shed. Like we're trying to convert it in some nice bar or something. She's like, maybe that's where all your Funko Pops could go. I don't know. Maybe that's where your prints could go. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see. I'm glad to see that's not just a conversation in my household. Should we get Tara, and my fiance Alex, on this call as well, just so we can hash it all out? <laughs> right. I think. I think just. I, I mean, if only if you're ready for an intervention, Daniel. I was drinking water, but maybe I'll go straight to the vodka or something. I think I'll need it. Right. It, it looks. It looks like vodka to me. And, and maybe maybe this is coffee in here. Maybe it's not. <laughs> That's why you're a better actor than me. At least yours was a bit convincing. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to chat to me today. I'm honestly, I'm so excited for this one. I was playing a lot of Spider-Man for research purposes yesterday. Yeah. Again, that's something I have to keep telling my fiance. This is research. Let me do this. Obviously. Now, were you playing the first game or do you have a code for the second game? Because I don't even have that code yet. I don't have. I keep seeing people talking about, oh, look, like the embargo lifts this time. I'm like, how are you doing this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. How are you going to celebrate Spider-Man 2 release day? That's a great question that nobody has asked me yet. And now I have to figure out a way to do it. Oh, man. Daniel, no, that's good. I don't have an answer for that, um, but at least you've got me thinking about it. Yeah, well, I'm glad you've got time to think up to it now because <laughs> this would be really tragic if you just sat there in your pants. Like, oh, I knew I should be doing something. That's true. I've, I mean, I've been I've been looking forward to it for so long that <laughs> I think I'll just be so relieved when when people are finally playing the game, um, and including myself, hopefully. But yeah, writing this, I went on like Google, typed in your name, so I was like, oh, let's see what you've spoken about. Da da da. I can't go onto Google without typing your name and seeing the words 19 inches of venom pop up as well. Yeah, I know. You know, they could not have paid for that type of publicity. Um, I forget, I don't, I forget what publication um, first posted that. But uh, yeah, nobody could have, nobody could have planned for something as, as cool as that. And I'll, I'll lean into it as hard as I can. As you said, they couldn't have paid for that. At least try and get some payment out of it. Right, right, exactly. Don't just accept it. I mean, I mean, I'll tell you what. I I pre-ordered the game just so that I would not miss out on 19 inches of venom. Oh, I'm so pleased. Like I got little goosebumps hearing you say that. <laughs> Aside from your your 19 inches, what yeah. other nerdy bits have you got going on behind you? Talk talk me through it. Oh my god. Well, I mean that that right there is the sideshow collectibles that that giant Spider-Man statue that I had no business spending that kind of money on, but. I feel, you know, I deserved it. I deserved it. Um, uh, I've got some artwork. This, this is some original or original Clive Barker print over there. This is this is a bar. This is a right here is a is a little bar that, that opens up. So speaking of uh, of converting things into bars, don't let my dad see this because he'll be like, well, let's let's do that now. Let's do that. No, no, no. Of course not. Oh, and and every all that stuff is sitting on top of a giant old uh, radio, uh, like a radio from the. From the yeah the early 40s uh i that's, there's, that's a they, they, they had stopped making animation cells and now i'm just sort of vaguely gesturing at things because you can't really see them because they're not focused that's uh from legion of superheroes when i played superman which was just like a huge thing for me um it's uh they, they, they had done away with cells at that point like animation cells because they didn't do hand painted cells anymore it was all computer but it was uh one of those interim drawings like a sketch and so i had to get that but i mean whether it's stuff I've been involved in, I mean, you know, whether it's this Spider-Man, you know, 
Earth 1048 Spider-Man, the Advanced Suit Spider-Man shrine that I have behind me, or just stuff. I wish I could take. I wish I could sort of detach this camera and take you around the room, but it's it's a bit uh, awkward. We could plan another time when we do that. Uh, take your tour of my office and just spend hours looking at the nerdy things that I have in my office. Because uh... done. And I will bring. Just to let you know, I will bring a massive sack as well. And while you're not looking, that's all coming home with me. You're just right. Just just shoveling it in there. At least I'm honest. I'm telling you, I'm gonna steal from you. Daniel, again, again, my my wife, you know, Tara would be very happy to hear that somebody was stealing things from my office so that there was less stuff. I'm doing it for your relationship, if anything. I know, I know. Every everything you do, you do it for me. And then when me and Alex get into a fight about how much stuff I've got, you come round and take it all back. We'll just take it in turns. Yeah, yeah. Or you could say, how could I possibly get rid of this? I stole it from your brain. Oh, good. I like your style. We're evil masterminds, if anything. We really are. We really are. I, I, I like how we're planning this out. I like that we've, we're, we're getting our plan together here. Like you were talking about like how long you've been waiting for this game. It's been five years since the first Spider-Man game. How nuts is that? Yeah, it's it's crazy. And I and I know we had, you know, COVID in the in the meantime, and that made that made time extra weird because I know they wanted to get right to it. Uh, and then we couldn't for a little while. And then we were trying to do it virtually and you can only move so quickly on a on a project like this. And then, then we had to go back and redo some of that stuff. And I mean, they've definitely been working in earnest on it, you know, for three years solid. Uh, so, but probably planning well before then. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy that it's been five years since the release of that first game. And I know we had a Miles game in between, which somehow they managed to do, you know, with, with everything that was going on. Uh, but yeah, yeah. This is uh, this game is huge. They keep saying in in press that it's about the same size as the first game, but I find that hard to believe. I don't know. I don't know. You were my saving grace during lockdown. I'm not gonna lie. That was the only way I got outside was going through the streets of America, swinging. <laughs> was it through in New that. York? Right. Yeah. It beats. I love that. The my little town in Essex. I I don't know. I hear Essex beautiful. Well, you're hearing from liars. <laughs> okay. Okay, fair enough. They are lying to your face. <laughs> how how mad has your life been in that five five year period? Like you must have had some real pinch me moments since being Spider Man. Oh yeah, I mean from from day one of the first game, it's all pinch me moments. Honestly, it, it still feels like a dream that I have yet to wake up from that I get to be Spider Man. I mean that's that's even on my worst day, uh, you know, because we all have bad days. Um, even on my worst day. At least I still get to say, yeah, but I get to be Spider-Man. You know, like that's always sort of my saving, my saving grace at the at the end of the day. Um, and then to, of course, you know, everybody wants to see Venom and the symbiote suit and all that. And so when they told me we would get to do that, I, again, and you know, more more pinch me moments. Uh, it ended up being a little more difficult than I than I thought to to find that mean mean Peter to find you know bully bully Peter. Um, because he's so he's so friendly like he's your friendly neighborhood spider-man and finding a place for peter where he was not that where he was your you know mean violent uh neighborhood spider-man uh was surprisingly hard for me to express just because i had gotten in such a an easy place you know with him um and i am i am not that way and he is not that way and to get either of us to act that way was was actually exhausting to be honest as you said it's not often that you get to play someone dark and gruff and edgy did you channel your inner sasuke and use that as an influence you know i think i i think the crossover was inevitable while it was never uh it was never a conscious decision um the crossover is inevitable because he is a character you know for which you know for the last 18 years that that i've you know, I've had to to find that, you know, that 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 temperament, th those uh, morals, uh, that type of aggression, um, you know, anger, uh, and so I mean, it is possible. While while I don't feel that I consciously accessed Sasuke to to find the symbiote, I think I ha I was able to find the symbiote because of groundwork we laid, probably, you know, in just playing Sasuke for as many years as I have. Although Sasuke's mellowed out, you know, he's, he's a dad on Boruto, you know, he's, he's a little less consumed by revenge, it's, you know. 
But now that you you've got to that place where the gruffness and that, do you reckon you could ever use that just at home? Like, say your son doesn't do his homework, you can just channel that in a symbiote voice and just really give him hell. I wish that I would believe that was true, but um, he would. He, I mean, that I, I don't think that would work on him, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's already already surpassed me as far as that like somehow he can already access more of that than than I ever could he would just he'd, he'd meet me and surpass me uh in a heartbeat I suppose especially with your son like one thing that must be difficult during this whole process is keeping plot lines keeping spoilers from getting out like how do you keep it a secret well every you know I mean I'll be honest, every now and then I'm sure I said something that I shouldn't have said. And I'm sure he lulled me into a sense of complacency because he's seven and I'm like, who is he going to tell? But now he's got friends at school who play the game. So I have to be careful. So there there have been a couple of things where I'm like, hey, buddy, I'd really appreciate if you didn't bring this up because uh, daddy would like to keep this job um, and I can't have you uh, spouting off at school. But I also know that he's got no impulse control. So I really, I try not to, you know, say much, but there are things he just knows just by the nature of, you know, of being here while I'm working. Um, I've tried to distract him a little bit by getting him to start playing the first game because he's seven now. And I thought, you know, this is a perfect time for him to start playing. And it's been good for me too, because well, if A, it keeps him focused on, on this, on the, the old game that we don't have to spoil and B, uh, you know, I famously three percented the first game and then walked away because I'm old and lazy. Uh, so getting back to it and playing it from the beginning with him, where we just sort of hand off the controller back and forth when one of us gets frustrated, I've actually gotten uh, much further in the game than I ever did before. Uh, I I don't think that I will f we will finish it before uh, the next game comes out, but it has been fun revisiting on one hand that game, but not even revisiting, seeing some things for the first time because I just had not played that far into the game. And while I worked on the game and you would assume that I already know everything about the game, no, that is that is not at all true. And uh, and it's it's been uh, fun and surprising in, in, in a number of different ways. What is nice about this interview is because I love learning about your experience, a lot, but it also makes me feel brilliant about myself because I'm like, I've done better at Spider-Man <laughs> than Spider-Man, brilliant. Yeah, you can you can take that to the bank. I, they, I mean, they won't give you any, you know, money for it. No, no, they'll just send me out and go, get away from here, you freak, you're bald. <laughs> right, so security? But I'm better than Spider-Man! <laughs> How do you play? Are you, do you plow through all the story objectives first, or do you just get easily distracted by all of the Easter eggs? You know, we have, we have, uh, we've gotten a little distracted, but much like in, my, my son's also watching Naruto, and I'm watching Naruto from the, from the beginning through for the first time ever together. And much like in Naruto, we are skipping the filler uh, episodes to get to the, the real story stuff. We've been trying to follow the golden path, but, but I will say we've, I mean, he does like, uh, we, we did, we did a side mission or two so far and, and he does like anytime somebody's getting, you know, mugged, he has to stop and, and, uh, you know, and, and beat up some, some criminals and, and save some, some New Yorkers. You've raised a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, uh, you know, we're, we're doing our best to get through the story because that's that's the exciting part for me. But um, but we, we, we get distracted. You know, he's seven and and I'm easily distracted as well. I would just walk down the street high fiving people and just when he's doing all that, because I'm like, right, I just want a little bit of that. Again, if I do that on the streets, I get booed. I get booed out of town. <laughs> booed out of Essex. No, <laughs> that's when you really hit rock bottom. I mean, I. I do love that Insomniac has created a game where people would be happy with just swinging around New York City alone. Like it's just the, the number of people who have told me that sometimes they just they just hop on just to swing around because it feels good. It just makes my heart sore. When that music kicks in, as soon as you leap off of a building and that music kicks in, I'm in like this weird zen state where nothing can touch me. Agreed. Usually my interviews are quite nice and fluffy, they're light-hearted, but I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you something. It's probably the most harrowing question of your entire career to date. Oh boy, okay, okay. What is your go-to Spidey suit? I you know, and it's it's a it's a it may be a boring answer, but I love the advanced suit because it's mine. Like I, I like I feel an attachment to that suit. I feel an ownership over that suit, I feel a pride in that suit. 
But that said, I also love spider punk. I love uh, noir. I've always loved noir. Um, I love spirit spider just because I was a, a ghost writer fan. It's just it's just the, one of the weirdest ones, you know, to be like, that's so not Spider-Man right now. Um, and I, I love there's there's something about the, the future foundation suit that I love. It's got a very sort of clean look. The eyes are a little buggy, but uh, but I'll be honest, most of the time um, I I will just I just I, just, I stick with the advanced suit because it's me. It's mine. Oh god, yeah. I wouldn't even wear actual clothes. I would get that made and I would wear that in real life as well. Maybe that's how, you know, if I had thought about how to celebrate October 20th, do you think I could get a suit made in time? I will look into it. And I'll embarrass myself, I'll embarrass myself on the internet because Daniel came up with that idea. If it, if it stops me from doing the shed because I don't do DIY, I will make you a suit. <laughs> it's not going to it's going to be ill fitting. It's probably going to melt in the rain, but <laughs> I'll give it I'll give it a go. Right, it's going to be made of tissue paper, trash bags, you know, sort of whatever you got around. Wait, to keep telling me these notes. Right, I'll, right, I'll, I'll right, make right, it happen. Right. Look, I I don't know what I'm talking about. Clearly. Oh, I never do. Let's face it. We're just here drinking our vodka, having a great time. Cheers. Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. Cheers. I, I do. I treat this game like a full-on movie, and I think it's down to your performance. Your performance is amazing. Like that final bit with Doc Ock on top of the tower, I think is gorgeous. And having such a a great portrayal of Spider-Man of Peter, there must be some qualities or traits that you yourself share with Spider-Man or Peter. Yeah, I would. I would say. I would say I'm very much. Peter Parker. I'm not as smart as Peter Parker. I mean, that guy's a legit scientist uh, who could change the world even if he didn't have superpowers, and I and I don't have that. Um, but I've always been, uh, I've always been very fond of uh, kindness, um, and I, I, you know, I try to run my life uh, with that in the forefront. And I've been obsessed, uh, maybe to a fault, with responsibility, uh, just because growing up, I could tell it was important to my dad. And my kid brain took that to mean the more responsibility I take for things, the more love I will get from my father, probably. I'm, you know, psychoanalyzing myself now. I don't know exactly uh, how to do that, but but I know that I probably took it on too much uh, because I have a tendency to take responsibility for things that I have no business taking responsibility for. And it's it's exhausting. And so I I do feel Peter's exhaustion um, he probably, you know, takes on more responsibility than he needs to as well. I know it's core to him, but, you know, it's, you know, be, being, being a superhero, he feels a responsibility to take care of everyone. Um, I don't have that problem, but, but I do feel a responsibility somehow to take care of everyone and it's not healthy. I'll be honest with you, Daniel. It's, it, you can go too far, uh, with that one, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, I make bad jokes all the time. Uh, and I, I cover, I cover, you know, uh, sadness and, and grief and nervousness and, you know, all of those things with a smile and a joke most of the time, uh, which is not to say the entire time that we've been laughing together that I was just sad inside. I, I want to, I do want to be clear there, Whew. but I know that is something that I do. Um, and it's something definitely that, that, that Pete does. Um, I, I care very deeply for my friends and my family. Uh, I, I think it's. You know, we have more things in common than we have less things. Um, so, so I would say, yeah, I, I align very, and you can tell even people are like, uh, do the Spider-Man voice. And I'm like, I've been doing it this whole time we've been talking. This is lit. I, I literally do nothing to make a Spider-Man voice, to make a Peter Parker voice. Although that said, we do distinguish uh, his voice in the, in the game when he's got the suit on when he does it. You know, when he's Peter Parker with people, he definitely carries himself differently and and speaks differently than he does when he's behind the mask and he's you know fighting bad guys. So, so there is that. But yeah, I, I would say I'm, me and me and Peter pretty pretty close. This isn't one of my questions, but after that, can we just become best friends now? Okay, done. I thought that was going to take a lot more convincing. <laughs> I was going to give you money, but you've worked your way out of that one. Sorry. We, we sorted it out and, and now you're now you're gonna have to explain Essex to me when I show up on your front doorstep you're not ready for this have you got a good therapist 
I do, actually. So, yeah. One thing you mentioned where you were talking about your similarities with Peter with Spidey, uh, you didn't mention is that you both, in a way, know a Yuri. That's true. Not many people actually get to shout out their own name during their work. That must be pretty, pretty great to do. It was, it was never not weird, never not confusing, um, you know, through the course of it. And, and I thought it would get easier and it did. And it was complicated, of course, by the extra layer that knowing that Yuri is played by Tara. <laughs> so, um, which is, which is the reason for, for all the, the great chemistry between, uh, between Pete and, or Spidey and, uh, and Yuri in the game. I think it was just something we couldn't, uh, we couldn't control. Were there ever just days where you two would come back from work and just be like, right, we're not talking about Spider-Man. Spider-Man is off the table. Well, luckily, luckily I'm the nerdy one in the family and, and she, you know, cares less about that stuff. So not talking about Spider-Man when we got home was was always sort of at the top of her list just by the nature of who I am versus who she is. So we were, we were okay there. Uh, obviously, it's not just Tara in this, but you also get to share scenes with the candy man himself, Tony Todd. How was it hearing his Venom voice for the very first time? You know, the very first time I heard it, uh, we were at a, not not me and Tony, but I was at a, a PCAP session. And Brian Intahar comes up to me, the creative director on the project. Uh, most of you probably already know that by now. Uh, comes up to me and he goes, hey, come here. <laughs> so it's sort of like a, we're, going, we're about to do like a, you know, backroom deal for something. He's like, Damn, come here. I want, I want you to hear something. And he, we sort of get off to the side and he, he takes his phone and he presses play and I hear those just just a couple of lines but one of them was that iconic you know we are venom you know thing that he that i that was a joke what i just did right now but but he uh and i heard it and i was like you know i just my my my, my jaw dropped and he's like i know right we got tony Todd to be to, for for venom i think we found our venom and i'm like oh you absolutely found your venom uh and and i had worked i mean th you know thankfully I had worked with Tony once before, not too long before, on a show called Dota Dota 2 Dragon's Blood uh, for Netflix, where where his character and my character have essentially the exact same relationship as we do in Spider-Man. So, so A, we, so we were prepped on two different levels. We were prepped on the character thing. And also, I had gotten to meet Tony and had gotten over my, uh, you know, uh, fear of Tony. <laughs> Which, which, which I say jokingly because, I mean, I've been a fan of his forever. You know, I'm a big horror buff and I used to watch X-Files. And so it's like, I mean, Tony, I'm a big genre guy and Tony pops up all over the place. And he's he's one of those actors that when he shows up, like I lean and I'm like, oh, this is going to be good, you know. Um, but but of course, because of the characters he plays, if you get a chance to meet him, the first thing is you're, you're intimidated because he's Candyman. Like you, he walks in and you're like, oh, shit, it's Candyman. Um, so, I, so luckily I had gotten past that. And know that he is just he is a you know extremely generous giving actor and human being and he's just so cool um and and kind and so 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 luckily at least you know i had i, had, I was prepped for that but um but when when brian said tony for venom i was like oh my god you know why didn't we all just say that on day one sometimes you you, you know you like it it seems natural like it seems obvious but uh but 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 it's weird that way. Like you, sometimes you just have to you have to get there to realize that that was how it always should have been. You know. Well, do you reckon he'll be playing Spider Man? Is he a big a gaming nerd as well? Oh, he's a bigger nerd than me. Like comic books and gaming. I mean, arguably, I'm sure he'll probably play and finish the game before I will. I can almost guarantee that. I mean, yeah, I could guarantee that as well. Probably. Right at this point, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, with, without a doubt. Um. But yeah, but he's, I mean, he's always been like a big, uh, you know, comic book guy. Like his, his, his pedigree, as far as that concerned is, is unmatched. Like he, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll get there before I will, for sure. Add him to the list of people that love this game. I know I bang on about it, but like, that's not a hot take. Spider-Man was a pretty big game, <laughs> but I, I know even Tom Holland, like loved playing the first game. I, 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 I've heard that. Do you know if any of the other Spider-Men are big fans of it? I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, I only know that, that Tom played the game because someone told me that it came up in an interview and um, I think they asked him about, uh, they asked him about, about me and he's like, 
oh, the the guy who does the narrations for the game. Yeah, he's he's, he's brilliant. Um, and I'm like, Tom, narrations. <laughs> narrations that's really no no i i love that he uh that he that he loved it. you know i've never met tom because we, we live in we live in different spheres you know <laughs> different in different worlds uh but uh but i've always loved what uh you know what he does and um i don't know if any other spider mans have played the game potentially josh keaton has played the game uh because he was in the first one as uh electro as well and you know he you know he's he's the top of my list for favorite spider mans um I don't know how many other Spider-Mans have played the game. There's like a thousand and one other Spider-Mens. So chances are Right. Hey, anyone anyone can wear the mask if we've, you know, if we've determined anything at this point. Anyone can wear the mask and it anyone has and anyone will, you know, in the future. Uh, so you're saying there's still a chance. I won't make a great one at all. I get out of breath going downstairs, but look, Daniel, if you had if whatever, you know, this seven eight years ago or whatever when i got the job if you had b before that had ever said do could you be spider-man i would be like oh the chance you know it's chances are very low that uh that i could you know do this um so if if it worked for me daniel it can work for you done right that's the end of the interview that's all i needed bye <laughs> right, right that's what i that's that's the content i tuned in for I'm sending it straight to Insomniac. I've got Spider-Man 3. I'm lucky. Sorry. Wait, you hired who? Daniel, what? Who would you say are your top Spider-Man actors of all time, aside from yourself, obviously? Obviously. Uh. Um, I mean, you know, Toby was always my movie guy growing up. Um, but but I like all this, you know, I like all the, the, the you know, the, the current and past, you know, film Spider-Mans. And... I didn't even realize how much I liked all of them until No Way Home, and I saw all of them in a room together conversing. And I'll be honest with you, if the next movie was just those three Spider-Mans in a room drinking coffee, just shooting the shit, I would watch three hours of that movie. Um, they didn't wouldn't even have to go outside. Uh, so, so it was like I, I love all of them now for their for their own reasons. I mean, you know, Tom Tom has been doing a brilliant job uh, since since he entered the. The, the Marvel universe, um, but uh, you know, I, I you know, I, I mean, I love Josh. I, there, 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 there's so many good Spider Mans out there. There's been an opportunity for so many good Spider Mans, um, and uh, and I love how Miles is like a whole new generation's like go to Spider Man. Like when you say Spider Man now, to to most young people they will think of miles first and i and i love that i love that the the character itself can change with whatever you know the generation you know the current generation you know needs or wants um that it's it's not just that the character fades into obscurity because you know that was good for whenever but you know now we need different heroes or whatever there are more spider-mans and now you know that we cracked open the spider-verse that that's a very deep well but but i love that you know to a whole new generation now when you say spider-man they're like miles and, then, and you're like no peter parker and they're like oh they, yeah that's old spider-man you know who, who you know who's whose jokes i never understood nor ever funny but but you know miles is my spider-man I, I you know i just i just find that fascinating i love it oh you can't just brush over by the way Spider-Verse and not talk about you being in the greatest film of the year. How, how did that come about, dude? I, well, I mean, here's the thing. They they teased, you know, I mean, there was an Easter egg in that first game for, for our Spider-Man, you know, our, our suit was in the background. Um, and we were happy enough at that. Like, you know, that little nod saying, hey, you know, we love the game too, um, was was enough for us. And then he shows up in the in the trailer you know, walking with Miles, you know, in the in the sort of in the background. And and then we would have also been happy just with that. And everybody at that point was like, you're in the movie, aren't you? Um, but I had not gotten any sort of phone call. <laughs> um, and I figured at that point, well, you know, they can they can show him in the movie. Um, you know, fans will be happy and they don't necessarily have to have me have him say anything. Uh, and if they do, you know, it's entirely possible they just get somebody else to do it, I'm, you know. I'm sure uh, Phil and Chris Lord have plenty of, you know, uh, friends, you know, famous friends who who could have uh, done that. But uh, then I, just a few months before the, the movie came out, 
I finally got that call. And I got to go in and, you know, being the huge fan that I was of the, you know, and still am of that first movie. Like, I loved it. It's, it's like, it's so great. It's one of those perfect movies. Um, to then be a part of, you know, the follow up to that was just uh, madness. Again, a, you know, a, it feels like a, you know, a dream I've yet to wake up from. But getting to go in, we, you know, I didn't spend that much, you know, time recording for it. It was, you know, just sort of a line and a half. And, uh, but, but Phil was awesome about, uh, he's like, you know, we've got what we think we want to use, um, you know, written, but let's rip, like we riffed for like an hour, just other things, you know, or possible other, you know, jokes or funny lines or things that could happen in that moment, things they might need. Um, and that was, that was the joy for me. Obviously it was, honestly, I was in such a, a state of shock when I was sitting in the theater watching it that I almost didn't even really hear the line. You know, I knew it was coming. I knew where it was coming. And then I just sort of went into a fugue state and, and don't even really remember acknowledging the, and then I would have, and then I went back and saw it again and, uh, and noticed it a little better, you know, that time. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the joy really was getting to, you know, work, you know, with that hour for, for that hour, you know, with Phil and, and goof off. And, you know, he was, he was so kind and generous and everything. So, but yeah, being a part of that is, is huge. It's, you know, like I said, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a big old nerd. Anytime I get to work on something that I already appreciated, you know, before getting into this type of work or, you know, working on specific things is, is, is just like an extra layer for me. It's just a little, you know, I can check it off my nerdy list of, oh, I got to be a part of this thing that I, you know, grew up loving or whatever. So, you know, take off your list as well. I'll preempt it. It's going to win the Oscar for best animated picture as well. You now get to say, You've been in an Oscar-winning film as well. Daniel, I had not even projected that far. Man. And you know what? I'm going to say, they wouldn't have won the Oscar without you. Okay. You know, I, you know, I know this is just a conversation between you and me, and, you know, it's not, you know, nobody else is going to be privy to what we're talking about here today. So, so I'm going to say, yeah, you're right. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for, for also agreeing, you know, that I think we can agree on that. I mean, that film, like we mentioned, it's got... Shamik Moore, it's got Nicolas Cage, Drake Johnson, like loads of different Spider-Mens. Yeah. Is it hard to see all of these Spider-Man actors and not mimic them when you're doing your performance? Or or do you embrace that? Do you take little bits of what they do and and merge it into your performance? I think I think it would be disingenuous for me to say that my Spider-Man is unaffected by any of the Spider-Men who went before me. <laughs> um, because I because I've seen all of them, you know, I've ingested all of them as, you know, a fan. Um, but I, but I, I never like decided consciously to, to pick and choose little things or to model my, I mean, my Spider-Man is basically me plus Insomniac. Um, so, you know, the, the brilliant writing that they hand me and the, the direction and the, you know, the, the story that they want to tell plus me uh, equals Spider-Man. Um, although it's, it's funny you mentioned Nick Cage and uh, this this occurred to me uh, the other day uh, I was I, I, I got to meet Jack Quaid who I'm of, of whom I am a, a fan and uh, it, 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 I realized and I and I told this to him <laughs> that uh, we're part of a very uh, specific club of people who have played both Spider-Man and or sorry or, or people who've both played Peter Parker and Superman, um, and I think the only members of the club are, and, I, and please uh, feel free to debunk this claim. I'd love to know who else belongs in our club, but me, Jack Quaid, and Nicolas Cage, um, and I. All, all I can say is, uh, you know, I'd be first in line at the, uh, the inaugural meeting of that club. So, uh, invitations out to, to Jack and Nick, and uh, uh, yeah, that's because uh, he's he's also because he's he was a matter of fact. Nick has us both beat because he was Superman and Spider-Man in the same year because he was Superman in uh, Teen Titans, the Teen Titans Go movie, and he was uh, Noir in uh, Into the Spider-Verse uh, in that same in that same year. And then he got to be Superman again uh, if you watch the recent Flash movie, which, you know, um, was a, a glorious bit of fan service. Uh, but yeah. Let's face it, Nicolas Cage was always going to be the president of the club. No matter what the oh, club yeah, was about, Nicolas Cage is going to be the president of it. As long as we get, like, satin jackets for our club, 
Have I got to make those as well as your Spidey suit? Because oh. yes, yes, you've got a, you've got a, you've got a lot of seamstressing, um, tailoring in your future. I think Troy Baker might also be in that club as well. I think he played Web Slinger, uh, like this Western version of Spider Man, and I think he's also played Superman. When did he play Web Slinger? I'm familiar with that character. In Ultimate Spider Man, and then Superman in. Because I know he's played Batman. Uh, Infinite Crisis. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. This club. You can start a little holiday now, the four of you. I think aligning our schedules for that would be difficult. But uh, Again, I've not got much else going on at the minute. If you want me to sort of be a PA as well, I can make something happen. That'd, that'd be great. Do I get invited to the holiday as well, or am I just watching from afar on Instagram stories? No, somebody will need to take minutes. <laughs> oh, I can't enjoy it. I'm still working. <laughs> right, right. Fair. You know what? That, that seems fair. I do only take orders from President Nicolas Cage, though, unfortunately. That makes two of us. This club's got a little weird thinking about it. Saint Nicolas Cage, yeah. We mentioned the Spider-Verse. It's not long until we get beyond the Spider-Verse. I'm hoping you'll make another appearance in that. I'm also hopeful that you'll make an appearance in Spider-Man 3. Now, what would you love to see happen in that game, should it come? Are there any specific characters or villains you'd like to appear or any comic book events that you'd like to happen i mean i've you know i always loved spot and i was pushing you know spot for you know for this this latest game and then of course you know he, he came up in, in in the most recent movie um you know all the all the you know the the joke villains all the you know the big wheels you know <laughs> out there and the tarantulas and i'm um, not the tarantula was a joke villain for me when i was a kid like he was I remember like when I think about reading Spider-Man comics when I was a kid, like he was one of the first villains I remember. Um, but uh, oh, man, you know, I'm just so happy to have been any part of it that really going forward, and I trust Insomniac so much at this point, so deeply, that really they could come up with anything and I would be happy. So... So yeah, and I'd be afraid of if I said something right now and it was something that they had already thought of, I would get in trouble uh, for, for spilling the beans even though I didn't know they were the beans. So so I'm not going to go with anything specific. But uh, again, I just, you know, anything, anything, anything at all. One thing I did see was Brian Horton tweeting the words, worlds collide, hashtag Wolverine, Hashtag Spider-Man. Yeah, your face. That was the exact same face I pulled as well. What What do you make of that? Could we ever see an astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine crossover in a game? I will say this. Uh, while that is news to me, um, and while, you know, while a, a Spider-Man-Wolverine crossover would be terribly exciting, I would... There, there's, there's one character that I would opt for even more strongly than Wolverine and it would be Deadpool. Um the if you know the Spider-Man Deadpool relationship in comics is one of the most delightful out there. And I would I you know and I've you know my second only to my Moon Knight obsession um with 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 the Brian and Tara sick of uh, I, you know, I, I've, I've pushed him, you know, <laughs> every time I see him with the Deadpool thing. So, um, if I've just spoiled it for, for Spider-Man 3, then, you know, then, then I would just like to believe that they got the idea from me anyway. Um, I, I, th there's a part of me that thinks that, uh, the fact that if you pre-order the game, uh, Spider-Man 2, that the, the first suit you get is the Arachnite suit. I, I feel is a Brian's way of placating me by by including Moon Knight somehow in this game. There you go. You got what you wanted. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That was exactly. That was. Yeah. Now shut up. Yeah. Now shut up and let us let us make this game. Let the adults make the game, please. You spin on your chair now. Enjoy your day. Yeah. <laughs> right. On the topic of unlikely duos, whether that be Spider Man and Deadpool or Wolverine, I I want to pit two of your characters, two of my favorites against each other great go who do you think would win in an all-out no holds barred battle royale between spidey and ben 10 that's a that's a good question 
You know, I think I think you know Ben with all his aliens to bear. If he were if he were able to correctly operate the Omnitrix and call the ones that he really wants to call, from moment to moment, um, he might have an edge over Spider Man. Now, if Spider Man has the symbiote, his own alien, uh, it would be a little more evenly matched. Um, but Spidey's also, at, at least my Spidey, um, you know, has has several years on on Ben and uh, is is a tactician in a way that Ben is not, and a scientist in a way that Ben is not, and so. So Pete might might find a way around it. Like Pete, Pete might actually hack, find a way to hack the Omnitrix. Um, wow, you know, I I never thought I would put this much thought into that fight. That's what I love about you, because I think most people would have gone, I don't bloody know. <laughs> right, right. You went, right, let's get the drawing board out, let's go. You was like a beautiful mind there, drawing all of these workings out on the windows. That's what it looks like in my head right now. Do you have a favorite alien of Ben's. I do, uh, and that alien is Wrath. And I think I love Wrath most of all because John DiMaggio is just so funny. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think we can all agree that if John DiMaggio is playing a character that, you know, usually becomes your favorite character of a thing. I would say up there for me with Diamond Head. And like, sure. I know that must be a bit of a sore spot for you because he sort of defeated Vilgax. Yeah. Would you say his voice, Vilgax, was probably one of the hardest ones you've ever had to do? Well, it, you know, it was it was an honor. I mean, a, you know, any any actor will tell you that playing villains is their favorite thing to do, and b, the fact that, uh, that I, I, you know, I didn't play Ben in that new, uh, in the in the new uh, uh, reboot, but that they, but that Man of Action, you know, uh, you know those those guys are so great that they thought. Hey, you knew you know who we should have play Phil Gax this time? The guy who played Ben last time. Um, is I'll never be able to thank them enough for trusting me to do that. Yeah, it is way out of my my wheelhouse, or at least my normal, you know, like what I what I would normally do, for sure. Um, but it was so much fun and I and I I can't thank them enough for for, you know, letting letting me do that, for taking that leap. Finally, I'm gonna have to wrap soon, but you and Tom Holland, you know, we mentioned you sharing the role of Spider-Man. You've both done that. I've seen a lot of people fan casting him for a live action Ben 10. Now, what are your, your thoughts on that? Would you like to pass the baton on to him? Have you got your own thoughts on who should be a live action Ben Tennyson? Well, I'll tell you what, and not enough people have commented on this. Um, Graham Phillips, who plays uh, Harry Osborne in this game, played a live action Ben 10 in the first live action Ben 10 movie. Now, he was much younger and that character was younger, but n not enough people have said, hey, you guys are both Ben 10. Uh, so so I find that fascinating. Um, and uh, the, the Alex Winter the directed uh, that, that first one for Cartoon Network, that first live action one, Graham was Ben. Um, but uh, I mean, I think Tom would be great, but Tom might already, I mean, it depends on what age Ben, like, I mean, Tom, you know, will look young forever, I feel, but uh, but he doesn't look ten. Let's be honest. Uh, so I guess it depends on what depends on what version of Ben. You, I mean, I'll watch Tom Holland, you know, play anything at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if if he was slight, if he was slightly older, if he was like, you know, Ben, Ben twenty, maybe. I hear a franchise coming on. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Producers, we can earn big bucks for years. Just wheeling out Tom, Ben 90, happy days. Keep them coming. Absolutely. You heard it here first, folks. Thank you so much for chatting to me. I've loved every single second of that. Uh, same. Same thing. And thank you for getting me out of doing DIY on my shed currently. My dad's just out there soaring away, God bless him. You've really done me a favor, so thank you. Well, well, if, he, if, if you need some extra time, um, I can write you a note saying that our interview was uh, three hours long. <laughs> uh, and uh and you could you could give him to that later you know you give give that to him later if you like until he watches this back and then punches a hole through his tv out of rage <laughs> you can you can hide out in your in your room and play uh and play more video games while uh he's working on the shit dude honestly i cannot wait for spider-man 2 that is it it's gonna stop me from seeing any friends and family for a good few weeks i have a feeling the world will come to a, a shuddering halt for, for at least several days. Thank you so much and have, have a good rest of your day, bud. Will do. Thank you, Daniel. This has been awesome.